I didn't anticipate as much hate as I got like when the Meet the Queens came out. Like the first thing that came out, everyone was like, she's so loud and she's so fake and she's not being herself. Da -da -da -da. People have a lot to say about how I speak sometimes. But I can like call up a Ross Matthews and be like, Ross, I'm so sorry about that. That's not who I am. That's not who I want to be. This is some of my looks from Drag Race you may recognize. Take me back to the first moment that it got propositioned to you to do ma and why you decided yes. Yeah, I was at the bathhouse. When you did it, did you know right away, I'm here I go. I knew I was like, let's let's not stop this. So what are your thoughts? Are you doing your, uh, I'm just your nervous. The, I hate that the crowd's waiting outside, freezing, yeah. like yeah. it's cold outside, but they're handling all the technical stuff right now, so they have to wait till they open the doors. No. That stresses me out. And tonight you're doing the Ariana. And you have the dance? What are you performing tonight? It's giving fashion. Then I'm mixing it with Perfect Exceder. You want to film you? No, I don't want to be filmed. Okay. Hello, how are you? Good. Do you mind if I turn the camera on you? Once no, we get okay. Do you live here by yourself? Or you have a roommate? I have a roommate, but um, and Jax is staying with me right now. Congratulations on the Emmy. Thank you. How was your night? <sighs> Insane. And the Emmy goes to RuPaul's Drag Race. You know, you watch the Emmys as a kid. I mean, I don't know about everyone else, but I watch award shows all the time, and like they're so inspiring, and like celebrities walking down the aisle and then giving their speech. I felt like that. Thank you for inviting me. Thanks for coming over. I'm so excited to see your place. We connected a couple times because we all see each other at the WOW events. Mm -hmm. And Trino and Adam connected me to you. You've always just been so warm and you have like the warmest energy. So I've been so excited to talk to you more. And then especially after doing research, I just found out about so many facets of your life that I was just so curious about. Yeah, I'm kind of old. Like I've been around for a minute. <laughs> you know, like I think you're my G33 or? Yeah, 33. 1990? Yeah. Oh my gosh, we're the exact same age. You too? Yeah. What what's your sign? I'm a Libra. Okay, I'm a Pisces. What are Pisces known for? I think like creative and maybe sensitive. Oh, it's a water sign? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm a Libra, so I'm I feel like I'm definitely creative, but like very indecisive. I know what I want to do, but I sometimes have a hard like time like differentiating the details of what they should be. It's actually interesting you bring that up because from my point of view, like what I love so much about your drag is that you came in representing your culture from the get go. Like you came in with this strong, decisive move to be like, I'm going to represent my culture. And do you think that that hurt you at all? Or do you think, how do you feel like the, it was responded to? It hurt me in the, in the way that like, it didn't get me, f I got far in the competition. So like, that's something I have to stop saying, but I didn't feel like I was celebrated for what I was bringing to the table. Drag is an art form and art is like representative of like you. And for me personally, what I was going through when I got my phone call for Drag Race, my mom, um, you know, had cancer at the time. And so with the idea of thinking that she may pass away and stuff, like I was growing closer to her and, and like asking her questions I never normally would, would have asked her and never asked her actually about like how she came to America from Honduras, how, you know, what it was like to cross the border like like these questions you don't think about you know I've, I've said this at pride last year like you know pride we're so proud to be gay and we're like woo it's pride and i'm so proud to be gay and i would think to myself because i've been to prides forever ever since i was 18 and i'm like okay yes i'm proud to be gay but am i proud of everyone everything that I am as a person and like part of who I am is my Lat Latin heritage and I always used to be so ashamed of that especially because like I live in West Hollywood which is primarily like white muscle studs and I'm not that and like I remember being 18 and going to WeHo and like not wanting to tan so I don't look darker like trying to fit in my Latinness it was always something I kind of pushed down and like hid away I used to feel so ashamed and like I felt like I you know didn't fit there I, I was like I want more for myself and it's not this because I couldn't see the beauty in like a family party back then I see it today and um, it's so beautiful and I'm so proud of it but it's like I used to be so ashamed of it and um so my work on myself is kind of like asking mom these questions so I can learn how to be proud about where I come from and like who I am and like not have to be ashamed and like not be afraid to tan you know what I mean not be afraid if I speak a little weird sometimes or whatever the fact may be because people have a lot to say about how I speak sometimes which is really offensive to me because like 
I'm on my journey to own my Latinness, and I put it in my art, and then I hear people like talk about me, and um, it's not that I'm a victim, but it's like I'm still learning how to embrace it, you know. So like I'm still in it right now, and by doing it on like such a big platform like Drag Race. Like, that was very vulnerable of me to do, <laughs> you know? I could have went there and given them beautiful, gorgeous glam drag like they wanted, but I'm in my process and my art is a reflection of my process. First of all, I was gonna say, you should be so proud of yourself because you're always gonna get feedback from people when you put yourself out there and it's not always gonna be positive and there's a lot of negative people out there that are gonna try to put their negativity on you. And I wasn't gonna bring that up because it's really not my place, but I did see a lot of Reddit threads about this. Yeah. And and I, and I was I didn't want to bring it up because it's not it's not. But since you brought it up, I want to talk about it. Like well, yeah. the, the reaction that people had towards you, and it's affecting you clearly. It's it, because, like I said, it decredits my art. It decredits my experience as a Latin person. Like it hurts me because I'm like I'm just out here trying to own my shit and like represent where I can as I know it. And I don't know. Has your skin toughened up, you think, since all of this? That's the weird thing. I thought I had tough skin before going to Drag Race. I thought I was so ready for this. I've never experienced hate before Drag Race. So, like, I was not expecting this to happen because, like, people love me. And, like, I feel like I'm very lovable. So, I don't know. It was, I was a little like, oh, sh Okay, time to, you know, maneuver this way and, like, learn how to ride through this because I, I don't put up with that bullshit in my real life so the fact that that you know i deal with that on social media is a whole different thing not that i was gonna go on and think everyone's gonna love me like but i didn't anticipate as much hate as i got like when the meet the queens came out like the first first thing that came out as me of being a rude girl is like everyone was like she's so loud and she's so fake and she's not being herself da -da -da -da. and i'm like okay girl and this is all your drag stuff yeah will you show me it yeah, do you mind sure, sure. it's kind of fun to get a little, little situation it's like my altar of like stuff that people have given me, like a rhinestone hot chill. Oh, yes. Artwork. Someone brought me this vintage Selena Quintanilla, like one of a kind collector's doll. Wow. Which is sickening. This is some of my looks from Drag Race you may recognize. Like, wow. My entrance look. <gasps> um, my talent show. Oh. Looks I didn't get to use. Oh my gosh. Yeah, and that's my makeup station and my wigs and my. So this is this is where you like get all this is where you like sew and stuff too, right? Because you sew and yeah. Sew. So my sewing station is behind this little crevice. Oh my gosh! Where I make all my outfits and stuff. As a drag queen, you need so much space in your apartment because you need so much room for all your clothing and, and stuff. And I have a storage unit because like the cake dress is never was never gonna fit in here. <laughs> Don't nice to meet flip. you. <laughs> I'm Matt. Nice to meet you. Hi, so nice to meet you. Are you nice to meet everyone? You're performing tonight too, right? Yeah. Oh, cool. It's gotta be something. Yeah. <laughs> How was your shopping? Did you get anything? I did. Um, I was dumb and only packed my right shoe for this trip. And so oh, I had shit. to go buy a new pair of shoes. Oh, We're gonna be breaking them in on stage today. Okay. So if I trip, not why, but it's gonna be why we say it is. Correct. <laughs> so I make, I made all the flyers and everything for... Oh, so you do all like the Photoshop and stuff? Yeah. Wow. So Todrick's coming tonight too? Yeah, he's performing tonight. It's, it's, he's never performed in WeHo like this at a bar, so this is a big deal. Did your grinder work out last night? I saw you post about you were looking for someone at Emmys. Nothing. <laughs> I think the audience was shocked by your first top. Oh my god, you saw that on Twitter? Yes. Oh, people were so surprised. I'm mostly a top. I barely bought them. I... Or someone posted it on Twitter. You, you did. I Otherwise, I wouldn't have brought it up. I wouldn't have brought it up. You. I, no, of course. Yeah. I was like, I was like, is that, I was like, who's here? And then my my profile picture, I wrote, um, hope, hope you win. win. <laughs> <laughs> was there anyone juicy on? That you were shocked to see? Um, no! There was a lot of hot guys at the Emmys, but none of them were on Grindr. Robin Fierce was on Grindr. She was on Grindr more than I was. And she was actually getting a lot of hits. Like, <laughs> more than me. When did you get the call from RuPaul? Like, tell me about that. So you get two phone calls. And the first phone call I got, where was I? I was at home. They're like, hey, is this Selena Cities? And I was like, yeah. They're like, hey, so you're in the running for, to be on season 15. Um, you're, you're not on yet, but we need to do a psych evaluation. And after that, we'll, we'll contact you um, and we'll see where we go but we're very excited and we hope it works out and i was like <laughs> had you auditioned before five times so when you got that call, that first initial call what were your, what was your thoughts finally bitch, let's go <laughs> you know what i mean like i really had every intention of winning is there jealousy amongst the season when it comes out and you all of a sudden see certain girls become 
the, the girls and other girls become not as much of the girls. Yeah, but it's it's interesting because a lot of it has to do like with who the fans cling to. It's hard. It's so hard because you can't control what's being shown and what's not being shown. So it's up to you to really strive and make lem lemonade out of lemons. Like I got the golden boot, which could have just been, you know, this thing that's like, oh, I have the worst fashions. I got the golden boot. Womp, womp, womp. What I'm doing is making the Golden Boot an entire YouTube series, and I have fans interacting with me on social media, and we're going to find the next Golden Boot winner for season 16, and I'm making YouTube videos, and I'm bringing me into the YouTube world now, and I'm getting subscribers, and uh, like I'm make I'm going to make that little Golden Boot my bitch, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> And that's how girls, I think, become a Trixie, become a Kim Chi, become a Naomi Smalls. It's like they're out here hustling and making lemonade out of lemons. <laughs> Okay, good. You're back there. Yes. Okay, yes. Oh, oh look at God. you. You look oh. gorgeous. This is Ricky, photographer. Hi, Matt. Nice to meet you. Nice um, to meet you. We're gonna be shooting like BT like uh, BTS photography and like oh, cool. photos and shit. Love so, that. Like, they just offered to fancy. do it, but like that's like it means so much because you don't understand. Like throwing, we're throwing this together so last minute. Do you mind throw a recording for a podcast? Yeah. Throwing this together so last minute, and it's like we didn't even have a week, you know, to sell tickets. So like the fact that people are like, "Hey, I'll come for the photograph for you," it just, it's so cool. Hello, hello. Oh, How are you doing? <laughs> I caught you mid bite. I was so hungry, girl. Are you getting excited? Oh, always, 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 always. Do you I... do you get nervous? Not until it's like. You're like at the staircase right before you step on stage, and it's like, oh yeah, I'm fine, I got this. And then the second I'm about to step up, I'm just like, <laughs> you're selling the merch tonight. <laughs> yeah. What's your name? I'm T. I'm Matt. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Matt. Nice. Are you? Her, you're her manager then, right? Or I'm not her manager. Um, I am a warehouse coordinator for the people who do manage her. Do you make a lot of your money from the merch? Uh, well, it, it costs a lot of money to make, <laughs> but um. The more I sell, the more I make. Once I pay off all the merch, which is so expensive, I'm a merch girl, because I love merch. It's all part of branding, you know what I mean? So I'd rather invest in that and like have people advertising with my merch and like feeling proud to wear a Selena shirt, you know what I mean? So how how do you know how, much, how many to buy? Um, you don't. It's up to you. A lot of people will buy like 50, so they can be like, oh, sold out, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I like, I like to, I like to just buy a book because I could sell them at my gigs. I could sell them when I travel. Got it. So it's interesting because you were saying when you got the call for Drag Race, you were dealing with your mom, mm -hmm. going through her sickness. Mm -hmm. There have been so many people that I've interviewed where they have these amazing things going on in their life and at the same time they're dealing with something very, very sad. It's almost like so much energy in the world and it just reflects in negative and positive ways how did that how were you able to handle that like you know going through such an amazing time in your life and also probably i'm assuming one of the worst times in your life yeah my mom told me before i went to drag race she was like don't talk about my cancer don't talk about my sickness on the tv she i don't think she wanted people to feel sorry for me you know what i mean she wanted like my talent to like just shine on its own which i knew it could so i she, I think she was like, don't talk about it. She didn't want people to feel sorry for me or for her. And like, that just shows you like what kind of person my mom was. And so I didn't talk about it, but I got the video message and I tucked. She looked very sick in the video. And that was the first time I'd seen her since I left. And I was like, I don't think she's doing good. And then when I got back, she passed away during my Snatch Game episode. Um, when it was airing, so I went through the entire, like, airing of episodes dealing with, like, my mom dying, like, having passed away. And so I'm like, my mom just died, but I'm about to get on stage in London in front of a crowd of, like, 2,000 twinks and have to, like, put on a show, you know? And I'm able to do that, so, like, it was the best time of my life. It was the hardest time of my life. And, like, a part of me processing the show, processing my edit, wah, 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 processing the negativity from the fans was so hard because I was also dealing with this, but I, I, I also didn't want to talk about the loss of my mom too much because I didn't want the fans to say, oh, 
is what you deserve or like thank god she's dead or like fuck her for birthing you because that's what these fans say these fans are nasty and so i was so afraid to talk about it because i didn't want this hate from the fans you know what i mean but it was also like thank god for drag race and like this big opportunity to distract me from the hurt of it all because i could have easily like I people watched me spiral like with the whole Ross Matthews thing like you know I was just like not in the best like headspace and so like I lashed out and I like regret doing that but um I was just like so hurt and like hurt from the show hurt from the fans hurt from my mom that was like ah you know what I mean <laughs> especially you mean like with your sobriety and stuff like making sure that you stay good and well yeah I don't have like the opportunity to just go and drink or snort a line in the bathroom with, like other girls you know like I have to deal with my emotions and sometimes dealing with them is a lot when you're in the middle of what you're going through so like you know things happen and like I'm human and like the thing is I am sober so I can't own up to my sh I can look back and think maybe I didn't handle that the way I should have maybe my emotions got the best of me in that moment but I can like call up a Ross Matthews and be like Ross I'm so sorry about that that's not who I am that's not who I want to be in this world and like I apologize for my behavior I'm sorry that that happened and then move forward you know it's beautiful that you're able to apologize and mean it with your heart and and I I know that he probably forgives you he said girl I love you it's all good I get it it's hard I, mean, I had a conversation with the producers like literally that day too and they're like we'll never know what it's like to be a drag queen on drag race so we understand but we just want to make sure you're okay because this seems unlike you and i was like it is unlike me i'm not that girl <laughs> you know i was just really hurt hurt at the moment so what are your thoughts are you doing your uh i'm just nervous the, i hate that the crowd's waiting outside freezing like it's cold outside but they're handling all the technical stuff right now so they have to wait till they open the doors that stressed me out oh don't be stressed they look like having fun out there i was on set finale today looking for a hair extension to match this wig mm -hmm. i um dyed this wig with box dye um, and then it faded into this color. I've had it for like a year. It's impressive. Um, and it matches like a, almost exactly. Like, like I completely. It. it was meant to be. It was meant to be doing And tonight you're doing the Ariana. How do you have the Ariana? And you have the dance? Do you have? Well, yeah, sort of, kind of. It's gonna be good. The dreadline will hit and I will at all again. I know, like, as long as you just do like the. Yeah, the. People are gonna. Yes, yes. What are you performing tonight? It's giving fashion. Then I'm mixing it with Perfect Exceder. Oh. By Mason and Princess Superstar. It's going viral right now because of like Saltburn. I love that movie. But it's so good. Yeah. And then there's like a little like piece of like my own song in there too. You film you? No, I don't want to be filmed. Okay. I'll do it way. I don't know. Oh my gosh, you scared me. You're here for the Emmys too, right? Of course, I won an Emmy. I know, congratulations. Thank you. How was your night? It was amazing. I looked fabulous. I felt fabulous. I was hot, uncomfortable, but it was all worth it because I won. It's yeah. a moment you're never going to forget. Never. Giving. Oh my gosh. They're... Yes, she's gorgeous. Take me back to the first moment that it got propositioned to you to do math and why you decided yes. Yeah, I was at the bathhouse because I was, also I was going to bathhouses before being on math because I, I just love the atmosphere. I love that people can just be gay and have sex and like, I love that environment of a bathhouse where you can, that's, it's a place where you can go and do that freely. F resides there, it lives there. A lot of tweakers hang out there because it's so accessible to have sex. And so uh, this guy, very beautiful and very talented. <laughs> <laughs> full of talent <laughs> uh he was doing it and he asked me if i wanted some and I, I was like i'd seen in the bathhouse what it does to people and how people act on it so i was like i can't do this yet at the time i was in a show and i was like i need to wait for the show to be over and then i can i know i can do it because i knew if i did this i was going down a path that was going to be not good i did my show and literally literally that night i did um i did my first hit in room 302 at, at Hollywood Spa. What did it feel like when you did that first hit? I don't want to glamorize it because it can, it, it is very, it was very sexy to me in the moment because it's like the smoke. We're in this dark room with like neon lights and it's like his big was hanging in my face and it's just very sexy and it, it it can be sexy and and doing it is fun for a minute you know until you start getting out of control and you can't stop and you're going downhill and there's people around you who aren't taking care of you and like not there for you and people start injecting it and that's very dangerous and it's, it just gets very very scary very very fast especially with that stuff when you did it did you know right away i'm here i go oh yeah <laughs> i knew i was like let's 
let's not stop this. And so then how soon into your addiction did you start seeing the negative side effects of you losing your apartment, of you losing your job, that kind of stuff? Uh, for me, it happened um, only like f like four months later. I always say when you have nothing to lose, you fall harder because people who have like the career and the husband and the job and the car and all that, like those are stuff you can lose that you lose over time doing drugs and alcohol. I was just a kid fresh out of college. I had nothing to lose. I had no job, really, like career. I had no boyfriend. I had no nothing. I kept it hidden from my parents. Like that was the biggest thing I was able to do. I was able to just go where people who have all this stuff have to lose all that first and then they go. I just went down. I was walking down the staircase one day and I saw this guy and we locked eyes and like I went and hooked up with him and I had stuff on me and he wasn't partying and um, I asked if he wanted to and he said no. I'm fine, I have 30 days today. And then he ended up using with me and he's like, Fuck, I relapsed, my sponsor's gonna kill me. So he's using all these like, this AA lingo that I'd never heard before. And I would keep hitting him up after that. And he's like, leave me alone, leave me alone. And I'm like, but there was something I knew that I saw in him that I wanted, right? Was that sobriety in him because I hated where my life was at the time. So I would, I would message him and he'd be like, you sound like a broken record. If you wanna change your life, meet me here or else don't talk to me. So I was like, I want to change my life. And that sounded nice because my life was not good, looking good at that point. So I went to meet him and he took me to my first AA meeting. I've been sober now for the past 12 years. Congratulations. Yeah. That's so really, you should be so proud of yourself. Thank you. And in your sobriety, that's when you met Frankie, Frankie Grande, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I met him at a drag show first. He was judging a drag competition I was doing at Mickey's. It was called Project Drag. And I ended up winning. And Frankie was like, I didn't know he was on coke. Like, out <laughs> but he was like i just thought oh he has a lot of energy this boy a couple days later i was at a meeting and he was sitting in the back mm. and i was like hey i'm the the pregnant drag queen who gave birth to virgin mary from the show the other night and he's like oh my god and he's like this is my first time at a meeting and i was like oh my god i've been sober for like three years like like so we just became friends from ever since then and we've just been trudging this road um staying sober and i can imagine i mean that Frankie's gone through a lot with his fame and dealing with online hate, I'm sure. So you two together can be there for each other, I'm sure. You know, Frankie, I, I, we see it all the time. Like, like people love to make him the butt of the joke with a lot of like being so gay and like out and flamboyant and crazy the way he is. But that's what makes him so beautiful. And like he, he doesn't care. And like if you know Frankie, he's the sweetest person in the entire world. Like he's just such a little sweetheart and like he's my best friend so like um i've gotten to watch him maneuver through life you know and like he he automatically like works out of a place of love and light so to watch him maneuver through the world um at his caliber and his status with especially like being you know his sister's the biggest pop star in the world like to watch him maneuver through life and then rely on me as support to stay sober like we're learning from each other so when i got on drag race like i call frankie when i'm like oh my god the fans are horrible and he's like well, don't you know he gives me advice on how to deal with it and i've i've watched how he treats his fans so i know how to treat my fans because i watch how he treats people in his world so i treat people the same way because i've learned from him so um i just i love him to the bottom of my heart frankie got sober with me and i'm like his sober support group and because frankie's sober his family now has him in their life in a way that they he wasn't be able to be present before, you know? Wow, amazing. A friendship like that is so important. You know, he gets flack all the time, but it doesn't bother him. Or maybe it does, but, like, you would never tell because he's just being himself and that's who he is. And, like, I hate that I let the Drag Race fandom get to me and, like, dim my light when I have a song called Find Your Light. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> do you think if they asked to do an All-Stars, would you be nervous about this fan reaction? No, not at all, because I would give... I would give them exactly what they wanted this time moving forward for all stars. Like I represented it best I could and I'll always be myself cause that's who I am. So that's going to come out regardless, but I'm going to give them the fashions that they want. And I feel like it's going to shut people up. <laughs> you know, they can't say anything. <laughs> I love it. And I, I, I can't wait for that time to come. It's coming. Oh, I believe it. But also like I, it could take its time because maybe I'm, I'm working regardless. You know what I mean? Start the show. Here we go. Here we go. so much for inviting me here and doing this it's been such a joy meeting you I, like you have the warmest spirit about you and 
really inspiring story and i'm just so thankful for you for sharing it thank you so much i do want to say too go buy my merch <laughs> it really helps me as uh, www.stitties.com i also have some music coming out i also have a youtube video go follow me on instagram at stitties i don't know why i don't have more followers it makes no sense to me i'll link everything i'll link i'll link everything below too so everyone can find you help me it helps with getting brand deals like they all look at numbers so if i have numbers i get money so that works we love money i need it i didn't win nothing on drag race <laughs> <laughs> I <don't need> nothing <laughs> okay perfect thank you so much so so fun